Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a review video for the April Book Naturalist Book Club pick, which was um, an author spotlight on Jennifer Ackerman. Uh, I read this book by her, Birds from the Shore, Birds by the Shore, excuse me. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background about Jennifer Ackerman, just so that you know why we picked her for an author spotlight. She's a very prolific author. She was born in 1959 and she is American. And she writes a lot about nature and environment and health and how those things intersect. She is an American and she was educated at Yale University. She got her degree in English graduating in 1980. And she went on from that to write eight books, I think is what she's now published. Her most popular books have been her books written about birds. And the book that I read by her previously was The Genius of Birds, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But she's also written about health. She has been and she was a uh, editor for National Geographic for a long time. She's written many, many, many articles and pieces for different uh, very high level outlets in the United States and around the world. So she's well known for her, her writing about science and nature. And so I had picked this book up, Birds by the Shore, a while ago. And this is a book that was originally published in 1995 and it was republished in 2019. So this is the republished issue. One thing I will point out about this book is that the illustrations were done by a woman named Karen Gross and they are just awesome pen and ink sketches of different things that Ackerman is discussing in this book. So I would highly recommend this particular issue of um, Birds by the Shore. It was originally published with the title uh, Notes from the Shore and the illustrations do exist in that version as well if you come across it somewhere. So what this book is is uh, a very meditative look at three years in which Jennifer Ackerman lived by the shore in the state of Delaware in the United States. So she was a young person at that time, um, newly married, wanting to start a family. And uh, she, she and her husband lived uh, in this little place along the Delaware shoreline in an area called Luz. That's the town name. And it's near Cape Henelopen is where she, you know, this book is set. And she uses this experience of living along this piece of shoreline as a jumping off point to talk about a lot of the things, the ecological and natural history of a lot of the things that you will encounter along this sort of mid-Atlantic shoreline, Sandy Beach, with very interesting, uh, very interesting examples that she uses of how birds and animals utilize the place where the land meets the shore, that intersectional area of salt marsh and sand beach and coastal um, near shore environment. So I really enjoyed everything about this book. I loved it. It's very meditative in its tone and in its writing style. I would describe this as being an awful lot like uh, Rachel's Rachel Carson's book that I read last year, um, which I'm blanking on the name, but uh, she writes in that same similar style, very very gentle and wise and just lovely and charming. I would use all of those adjectives to describe her writing style in this book. And I really just sunk into it and really enjoyed the time that I spent with it. My very favorite, this book is split up into sections where she talks about different aspects of um, life along the shore. And one of the sections is specifically about osprey. And I thought this was just an excellent, like sort of natural history of the osprey. And I really loved how she brought in um, not just the biology of osprey and other birds of prey that utilize the coastal environment, but also talked about things like pollution and the impacts of pollution on birds. Um, she brings in Rachel Carson herself and Silent Spring and what we learned about DDT and what that was doing to birds of prey. Then sort of takes us through the mid 20th century and into the current day, which at the time when she was writing this book was the early 1990s and what was happening with ospreys and bald eagles and that sort of thing. And she just writes about the topic with such love. Um, and she does that with throughout this book. There's a section on salt marshes and why salt marshes important are important, how humans have tried to sort of drain the swamp in order to control things like mosquitoes and how that has backfired on us. There's very interesting things in here about migratory birds and um, how important these coastal areas are for migrating birds in terms of stopovers in the midst of their migration. She talks a lot about horseshoe crabs and the, their importance in uh, the migratory 
efforts of birds to get between the north and the south. That's really very interesting as well. I just love everything about this. So as always, I would like to just read you a little section of the writing just so that you can get an idea of what it's like. And when I say just meditative and charming, I really, I picked this particular um, excerpt because I thought it, it was really indicative of what I'm trying to say. I've always loved the language of the sea. Sitting in classes on oceanography, I found myself transported by its vocabulary. There were swells, those long, low undulations arising from the waves that have traveled beyond the wind system that generated them. As the swell approaches shore, it feels bottom. There was fathom from the old English word for outstretched arms. Said Shakespeare, full fathom five like thy father lies, of his bones are coral made. There was the deep scattering layer, the concentration of huge numbers of crustaceans, fish, and other small organisms that migrate vertically in the water column, up during the night and down during the day. There was the neap tide and the spring tide, the latter having nothing to do with the seasons, of course, but with the time of year when the moon, earth, and sun line up and the moon's gravity combined with the sun's tugs on earth's moonside waters and on the opposite side as well, causing the tides to spring up higher over the land. So just amazing, amazingly evocative of the different um, physical things that happen along the coastline, but also just written with such love for the species that inhabit that particular area of, of the world and those ecosystems. She talks about, she does weave in some uh, memoir type elements as well into the book. I didn't find those as as compelling as I did uh, her writing about the actual natural stuff, and so I was glad that the the uh, that the memoir portions were very very small and interspersed throughout. Because at the time, you know, she's she's like I said, she's a, a young um, newly married person trying to start a family, trying to like begin her life as an adult and she's discussing her relationship with her father and things like that and at times that did feel a little bit clunky to me a little bit forced but luckily those pieces are very very short and sweet in this overall greater narrative of description about what shore life is like in this area of Delaware so I really loved it and like I said earlier, I also um, had read Genius of Birds by this author and really, really loved Genius of Birds. This is what the cover looks like for that. I read it on ebook and uh, it is all about how birds are not dumb. Like we all are, are used to sayings like calling people bird brained or, you know, things like that to uh, insinuate that they are less intellectually capable because they are like birds, right? Um, and birds actually are super, super smart and intelligent and have evolved all of these different methods for doing some pretty amazing things. And um, the genius of birds certainly uh, discusses that. And so I would highly recommend if you are interested in reading books by Jennifer Ackerman, either Birds by the Shore or The Genius of Birds, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. So another excellent read uh, for the Book Naturalist Book Club. I am certainly going to be picking up more by this author. I wanna read some of her stuff that is related to health as well. She has a book, I think that's called The Day in the Life of the Body, which I think sounds really interesting. A Day in the Life of Your Body. And that one sounds really good. And then she also has one, A Chew, The Uncommon Life of Your Common Cold. So either of those sound really interesting to me as well. So I'm gonna be picking up more of her stuff in the future. And then for the month of May, our pick is Small Bodies of Water by Nina Minga Powells. And this is an essay collection exploring different aspects of connection between people and the natural environment and uh, what this has meant for um, Powells who first learned to swim in Borneo and then has lived in different places from the wild coastline of New Zealand. Um, to places in England. So I'm excited to try this one out. This is from an author I had never heard of before. So that's always exciting. And this is a picture of our author. That's what she looks like. So we'll be reading this in May and talking about it then. I hope you will join in with us. Um, I hope that you have either picked up Jennifer Ackerman already and tried one of her books in the month of April or that you will do so in the future. If so, if you plan to, tell me all about it down below and I will talk to you later.